this video has messed up audio due to it taking place during a Twitch stream. Uh, so instead of game audio, you'll be receiving my mostly unscripted voiceover covering in-game events and generally tips and tricks to deal with true solo and DRG in general. Uh, starting out here, you'll see I briefly flash over my build and my custom difficulty preset. Uh, the custom difficulty preset is just to verify that I am playing the difficulty I'm saying that I'm playing with the correct settings. Uh, and I flash over the build just out of habit and also because there are tryhards in the community who can tell what a build is just from looking at a half a second of the build inspector. Here I'm mining the first veins in the starting room. Uh, generally there's always one Morkite and one Nitro Vein in the first room, which can get you well on your way to your first resupply. Pretty worth it. Though you don't want to loiter around for too long, because the first swarm spawns around two minutes in or three minutes in, uh, which is usually just enough time to maybe mine the starting veins and one or two more and maybe clear out a stationary or two before you actually have to hunker down. Uh, I misread the dirt here, which is a little embarrassing. Spam some magic bullets through this hole to kill the mech here that I can hear, but you can't hear. Here's another nitro vein. Pretty nice to have a resupply first. So now my game plan is to find a nice hold spot, prepare for the first swarm. So you'll see me pushing pretty aggressively to try to find a nice location to stay in, to plop a resupply down in and generally base my play around. Uh, throughout this footage, you'll see me incessantly jumping. Uh, that's one of the best things you can do to, to increase your survivability. Your time increases your distance from enemies and uh, will lead to you dodging grunt attacks quite a bit. If you watch any really high level gameplay, you'll see that they jump pretty much non-stop. Uh, here the first storm is announced, and I'm still pushing aggressively because I don't like any of these hold spots. Uh, the ceilings are too high, which makes it more difficult to deal with spitters, mechterra, and especially menaces. But I'm pushing into this tunnel, and this does look like a pretty nice place to hold, except, unlucky for me, both get near to spawn. Toss out four lead bursters in panic and chunk most of its health. If I had taken a second to aim there, I probably could have killed it in three, but this works too. It explodes and a bunch of guns spawn behind me. I dash out of the way just to try to hit that resup because uh, I don't want to fall down into the bowl and lose line of sight with all the grunts. And here I just sort of jump around because I'm fairly distracted. Uh, trying to interact with chat and the Twitch stream, and so on. I should be trying to find a more secure location, which I do now, dashing through this tunnel to avoid getting hit as much as I can, flicking to then back Terra spawn. I heard it, and probably saw it at some point as well. Uh, now I have basically the entire swarm kited behind me. Uh, we're deep enough into the first swarm that I know probably there won't be any more spawns, it'll just be stragglers behind me, so I can be reasonably confident that essentially all the enemies are in this globule beneath me. Uh, because of that, I dash over them, and lo and behold, there's basically nothing here. So now I'm free to kite backwards into the resupply again. Maybe spend a shield if I need to. And I'm just getting magic bullets value here because I have a lot of ammo in this gun and even if the value it does provide is fairly mediocre, uh, might as well get what I can. I shield again, and I'm spending a lot of my ammo and my mags just in a, an attempt to get rid of it, because Resupplier reloads your weapon, so if you can make that reload valuable, then you might as well, and you have more time in the shield than you really need to just resupply anyways. I toss out three lead bursters here, because I'm not too afraid of friendly fire given there's red trigger right there 
and the Ledversers take out the Breeder, which is nice. Now it's just the Stragglers of the Storm. Um, I'm somewhat distracted here because <laughs> of Twitch chat, and I play this bit fairly sloppily. I shield there because Molly is coming one way and the Menace is coming the other way, and I'd rather not be caught between the two without protection. Uh, here I should be killing the Warden. Uh, I'm not because I'm probably talking and or reading at the moment. At this point in the run, my game plan is to get to the next dirt. Uh, I know I'm about a minute or two off from the next swarm and a wave in short order. Uh, after I manage to get this Morkai in Nitra, my goal is to get another resupply down in a place that doesn't hamper my pacing. Um, I spend a lot of time in this room, more time than I should. I go back for this resupply, which damages my pacing a little more, and also I kill loot bugs here for no reason, and I spend a long time doing so. Um, one or two is reasonable, because it gets me to my second resupply, but <laughs> what I do here is, is, is really not. And in short order, I, uh, I actually get half punished for this misplay. And here they are. It's a small wave spawning. This wave usually spawns as a precursor to the next announced swarm a minute or two before. Uh, so at this point I know I'm playing on borrowed time. I'm about done with the enemies in that wave, so I move towards this location in, in an attempt to get more kite. Call in another resup here because I know I have two in the bank and I'm close to a third. Uh, having a resupply out in the open just means I won't have to suffer the pacing loss of going back to that other one. Uh, it might seem like a frivolous use of Nitra, but I have Nitra to spare, and pacing is, at this point, fairly important because I've spent so much of the run losing it. Get a stun on that menace from behind a wall, which is nice. And that's the last of the wave about. Now I really need to work on getting that Markite and that Nitra and leaving this room. So I hit the resup. Menace is still out there somewhere. Pretty scary, but I can start working on Markite now. Uh, I make another minor misplay here because at this point, for whatever reason, I decide I don't want to be on the zipline anymore. Um, I don't end up getting punished for it because this is a fairly easy cave as far as things go. Uh, mission control gives the warning for the next wave, so I really have to rush it here. I'm praying that this dirt is short and good and that I can make it to a better hold location in a reasonable amount of time, though it's not too bad if I don't because I do have a shield on cooldown. Uh, so I can recover from a mistake or two. I find this little room here, which is pretty nice. Uh, I call in a resup because I'm planning on riding out the storm here. This room has two long, easily escapable caves, or tunnels, sorry, uh, and a little central area, which is just about everything you could ask for from a holding location. Here, here I'm spamming auto cannon just to fear the Mactera in self-defense because uh, the auto cannon is a mediocre weapon with mediocre accuracy and it can't really deal with enemies. Spam some magic bullets just to get rid of my ammo and uh, to deal with this fairly small pack of enemies. I'm anticipating a larger wave here so I'm planning on resupping soon so I have good auto cannon uptime. But here's a Praetorian, a Slasher, and a Brindle, three extremely dangerous enemies, so I just shield, and it times well with my resupply. Leadburster shreds the Menace, part of the Praetorian. 
miscellaneous things. And I'm just sort of jumping around at this point. Uh, I'm not playing the most solidly position-wise, because I'm, again, pretty distracted, but as you can see, my mechanics just jumping around, liberally shielding, uh, which is something that I think newer gunners don't do a lot of. Uh, they don't shield nearly enough, even in non-modded gameplay, but especially in modded gameplay. Um, shields are not not in super high scarcity because of resups. It's more about the cooldown. Um, but in solo, if you can prevent yourself from taking damage with a shield, then you should, because those half health bars of damage really do add up, and that is what puts you on the back foot a lot of the time. Being able to tank through uh, a resupply grab is a pretty valuable thing to, to be able to do, so you want to keep yourself healthy, and and if you're not healthy, then you really want to have a shield. <laughs> I get some nice magic bullets value here, and some nice big bertha value, shredding that shell back that's coming straight onto me. Uh, and here I hit the last cave. I shoot some bullets around, just to clear leeches, and I'm satisfied. And now, at this point, just by eyeballing it, I can tell roughly that there's probably enough Morkite here for me to finish the objective, and it is a 200 Morkite, so this is the last room in the cave. So guaranteed, somewhere in this room, there is uh, enough Morkite for me. I call it a resup because it's just a nice safety net to have, in case I mistime storms or misplay and down. It's just a nice thing to be able to iron will into if it comes to that. Uh, I just cleared the previous storm, so really at this point I'm just trying to mine as much more as I can and get out of the cave before the next storm hits. I don't even really need that nitro at this point because uh, I'm about to leave, and I do have a resip down. And here, thankfully there is enough more kite in these three veins, and I just get out. Resupply, because why not? Might as well. Uh, and we're in the escape sequence. Generally, the escape sequence isn't too dangerous. Spawns tend to be comparatively mild here on 6x2 solos at least. Um, but one important thing to note is pacing and keeping pacing with Molly, because spawns do occur around you. Uh, and if you push the drop pod too soon, you might end up with a, a swarm on your hands trying to get into the drop pod. Uh, that dirt there was not the best. I had to mine to get up it, which is something that can be very dangerous and or fatal when you're actually dealing, dealing with a swarm. Uh, when I initially went through it, I was sort of brainlessly autopiloting and also sort of frantic, so I didn't really properly dig it to be able to retreat through it quickly, but if you're doing solos and you have the time to think about it, you should dig dirt in a way that is easily easily able to be passed through. Uh, here I'm just stalling a little bit for Molly and also to farm kills, because kill number, important. And after killing that sketchy slasher, sketchy slashers, uh, Molly is now a bit ahead of me, so I can run at full dwarf in pace to the drop pod. Spamming magic bullets just to get what little value I can out of this utterly mediocre weapon. And I do have a shield, so or just about one. I pinged the dirt because I'm embarrassed I misread it. Killed the Tri-Draw just for fun. And miss a million weak point shots, again, just for fun. And that's the solo. If you made it to this point in the run, uh, consider doing all the YouTube algorithm things.
liking, subscribing, maybe comment whether you uh, enjoy this sort of video format or not, or would like some more structured content of the same style, perhaps. And uh, see you all in the next video.